Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here and welcome to Outward. If you've never played Outward before, Outward is a big open world sandbox RPG with survival elements. It's one of the funnest games I've played in recent years and I put over 100 hours into Outward. We have a completed playthrough that we did when the game first came out and now that two big expansions have come out since then, most recently, last week, the Three Brothers expansion released, I thought it was a great time to get back into Outward, start up a new run, and see what surprises the world of Ori has in store for us these days. Uh, we're gonna be a dude. Character creation in this is pretty simplistic compared to some big RPGs out there, but most of the time, as you will in these games, you, you end up staring at the back of your character, right? It's a third person. RPG, and you'll be looking at your awesome gear and your awesome weapons and your cool backpacks. So the simplicity of the character designs never really bothered me much. Let's go with that, that works. So the big thing about Outward is that we play as a normal person, we're not some mythical hero or a chosen one, we're just a person in the world, uh, forced under circumstances to explore and uh, you know, make our stake out in Ori. All my life I've lived within the safety of Sierzo, spared the brutality of the world outside. But life in Ori is never that easy. For all the safety that my tribe provides, our laws are harsh. We are judged not as individuals but as bloodlines. The failures of my bloodline weigh heavy on me. My grandmother brought ruin to our tribe long ago, bringing a heavy blood price upon my family. We've paid the debt caused by her actions ever since. I joined an expedition across the sea with my old friend Yazan, hoping the money made there would be enough to clear my debts. This was a mistake. I'm lucky to still be breathing after our ship hit rocks on the return voyage. Now I have no choice but to pick myself up yet again and face the wild, untamed land outside the walls. I must carve my own future or die trying. Alright, so we are starting uh, with nothing. Let's go find some loot. We'll grab the torch. We don't really need multiple torches. Some tattered attire, it's, it's better than nothing. Early on it's worth picking up basically everything you can because you're either going to be able to sell it for silver or you're going to end up being able to use it in a crafting recipe, whether that's food or to make potions or whatnot. Although we're going to be pretty limited by the amount of stuff we can carry. You see here our pockets can only hold 10 pounds. Everything has a weight associated with it. You can see that in the bottom right of the inventory window. So we're not always going to be able to carry every single thing that drops. We can drink some of this clean water, and that'll give us a boost to our stamina regen. So if you're looking in the bottom left, health is going to be the red circle, and stamina is the yellow one. We're going to use that up whenever we run, whenever we dodge, whenever we melee attack. Alright, I think our friend Yazan is up here, but we're going to look around this area a bit. Because I don't think you come back here at all once you progress the story. This is kind of like an instanced area that's only used for this intro bit. Flint and steel, some linen cloth, and some silver. We don't need the wood necessarily. We're going to leave that. We can pick wood off of any tree. And now that we have the linen scraps, uh, we can craft some bandages. 
and we'll go ahead and just assign them to a quick slot for now. Bandages are a cheap way to heal over time. Not as potent as a, as a healing potion. But useful when you're out of combat. Alright, we got a machete. Uh, I see up in the distance a couple of hyenas. We could take them on, but being equipped like we are, we would probably get wrecked. And I don't know if there's anything useful up here that makes it worth fighting them. There's a tree stump that we might be able to look inside. Again, I just, I'm not sure if it's worth it. Maybe we could run in and loot and then just run away. Or not. Let's lure them away. And then maybe we'll run back and we'll loot the tree stump. Let's see if they'll follow us over here. They don't, oh, they don't seem, they don't seem too fast or too interested. Let's get them over here more. Yep, that's right. Go ahead and lunge that way. And I bet we can loot this and get out of here. Uh, we'll take all. And let's let's go meet up with the Zan. I think that's probably everything we need to gather. I saw that there was some gear in there, but I don't want to stop right now and look at it. Uh, yeah, this one is still chasing us. If it's just the one, we might be able to take him. Oh, he got a lucky hit in. You can get locked into animations in this game and they, the enemy will attack right through some of your animations. Ooh. Let's get some of our stamina back. I'm probably being a little bit overly careful here, uh, but these things can and will kill you. Especially if we run out of stamina mid-fight, like we're getting pretty close to running totally out of stamina, so we have to be pretty careful here. Let's see if we can get him to commit. There we go. And he's down. Probably not going to have a lot of useful loot. Uh, some hide and some meat we can cook. Whew, alright, well, <laughs> that counts as our first battle in the bag. And we lived! You can see already our pouch is overweight. Eventually that will start to slow us down. And sometimes it will slow you down so much that you literally won't be able to move and you'll have to Either drop some stuff or get to a vendor. Some more bandages. Let's look at the gear we got. Dark worker attire. It has some cold weather defense. It has a little bit higher attack resistance. And it looks a little better and that matters. So we're going to equip that for now. We'll take the bread. What you need? You're alive. You must be freezing. Come, warm up by the fire before you freeze to death. Uh, where are we? The last thing I remember was our, our ship hitting a rock. We're not far from home. You can see the lighthouse from here, can't you? Edo made it out too. He's making his way home to Sierzo to go get help. I'm glad Edo made it out. He's a Kazite. He was born on a ship. This probably isn't the first time he's had to survive a shipwreck. 
Go ahead and sleep in one of the extra bedrolls. If you're still feeling too injured from the shipwreck, go ahead and sleep in one of the bedrolls I laid out. And I'll keep watch for Edo and the rescuers. Alright, we could do that. I think we've basically gotten everything here. Let's take a look down this way. Alright, I think we're okay to sleep. Once we sleep, I don't think we get to come back to this area, so... Uh, I don't think it matters how long we sleep. Let's just do an hour. Unconsciousness comes quickly, and you dream of being ensnared in something. With a yelp, you jump out of your bed. Relief floods you as you recognize where you are. You're back in your old bed at home, the lighthouse in Sierzo. Yazan must have brought you back to your family's lighthouse. Only your aching body tells you that the shipwreck you suffered was not a nightmare. We're on the floor. He couldn't get us to the bed. Uh, let's check a few settings here. I do want to turn the music up a little bit. Sometimes there's weird copyright stuff that happens on YouTube with the music track because the composer of the music claims it. Even though it's technically just part of the soundtrack of the game. So I want to keep the music up, but... See how that goes. Uh, let's take the worker boots. We'll take the green worker attire, even if we just sell it. And let's take a look around our house. It's our primitive satchel. We need that on our back. Let's think about moving some stuff around. So you can click and drag or you can right click and, and move things around. Should be good for now. Uh, in our stash they've put a dark worker hood, some sandals, and a cook pot. The cooking pot is three pounds and we have a kitchen in our house, so I think for now any cooking that we do, we'll, we'll do it here. I don't want to waste the capacity space tugging around a cooking pot right now. Not until we get a better bag. We will take the jerky. And down here is our kitchen. Alright, we got a recipe. Teaches how to craft a Sierzo ceviche. We already know how to make the Gabbery Tartine. Gabbery jam thinly spread on bread, used to multiply the effects of jam into several portions. I don't think this has any special effects to it. If we look at the Sierzo ceviche, this has mana restoring and elemental resistance attributes. So a lot of food in Outward will do specific things for us. We'll take the Lantern with us. Rise and shine, trog spawn! You think you can nip off for four months and not pay what you owe the tribe? A blood price is sacred. You can't just shrug off that responsibility. If I don't see the money from you by the time I count to ten, you'll regret you ever came home! Uh, well, you know, we did just wake up from a shipwreck. Yeah, you were on that ship too, weren't you? How many lives must your family be responsible for destroying before enough is enough? But aren't you being a little unreasonable? If you can't make the payments you missed, we will seize your home! That ought to cover four months of ignoring your duty to the tribe. Either way, pay up or get out of our way. Enough of this! Twelve people are dead! Stop this shameful behavior at once! This is a time for the tribe to come together and mourn our lost loved ones, not to demand payment from a survivor. To threaten someone like this while the lost lives are still fresh is an insult to their memory. Rambles is the victim of that shipwreck too. Under the laws of the Blue Chamber Collective, I have declared a period of mourning 
You understand what that means, don't you? But... Chamber Lady Aberdeen... I said that is enough! If you want to resume discussions after the morning period, feel free. But until then, your concern should be for those whose lives were lost in the wreck. Oliel, see these people off, would you? You heard, Mother. Away with you, or I will personally see to it that you get double shifts of guard duty. I'm sorry that was the first thing you woke up to. Please forgive them. Many of them have lost family and are not thinking straight. If I could do more, I would. The most I can do for you is declare a mourning period and buy you a little time. If you do not pay off those four months you missed on your own, the tribe would have my head. For five days, no one in the tribe can ask for what you owe. That gives you a few days to pay back the money. Either gather the money, or earn a tribal favor, and they won't be able to touch you. Once you can make the payment, come see me. Please, find a way to make it work. Alright. Well, we're gonna have to head outside the walls. That does seem like your most effective option, dangerous as it is. I doubt you'd be able to gather that much in such a short time by staying in Sierzo. Never forget, no one is an orphan in Sierzo. Do not hesitate to ask the rest of the tribe for survival advice. Though you owe us a blood price, we will still help you however we can. If you can do a great deed for someone in Sierzo, we will owe you a tribal favor. Which I will accept as substitute for your payment. See, that's the great thing. <laughs> the, the writing in Outward is actually really quite good. And the quality of the voice acting is not terrible. But the problem is, they only voice act some of what the characters actually say. I'm thinking that for this run, I might just turn the voice acting off, that way I can read it all. As opposed to having to listen to part of the voice acting and then just read the rest of it. Once you're ready to leave Sierzo, speak with Burak, the Gate Warden. He will judge whether or not you are prepared to face the outside world. Remember, you only have a few days. May your ancestors watch over you. Alright, let me see if I can actually do that. If we can go into the settings... Uh, well... I guess we could turn the volume of the voices all the way down. I guess that would have the same effect. Let's, let's do that for now. Let's see how that works. Alright, so we have five days to do one of two things. We have to either save up 150 silver... Or, we have to do a tribal favor for someone in Sierzo. And otherwise, we're going to lose our house. You don't really want to lose your house early on. You want to keep your house. Your house is where you can sleep without threat of being attacked in the outside world. You can sleep there without any penalties to having to eat or drink water. Uh, you And you have your storage there as well, which is basically, as far as I understand, it's infinite storage. So, really don't want to lose your house. Uh, let's find... well, let's explore the town a little bit, because there are some things that we can find that we're going to be able to sell if we spend a little bit of time and look around the town. If we open our map, we'll see that we don't have a marker for ourselves on the map if you're not familiar with Outward. The maps aren't going to tell you where you're at. You have to keep track of where you're at with directions and with landmarks. But it will tell you where people of interest are at, where merchants are at, and so forth. So you can see, like, over here, uh, we're at the docks, and this guy up here is Roland. Roland is Yazan's brother. Yazan being the guy that we were on the beach with, we washed up. Oh, Rambles, what brings you here? How's my brother doing? Well, Yazan's alive, um, which is more than we could say for everyone else. Yeah, shame about that shipwreck. Accidents like this happen all the time. Not if the lighthouse was lit. Who was on duty that night? Oh, we picked something different. <laughs> exactly, if my brother had a smaller ship or you guys hadn't picked so many Kazite rugs or whatever else in Oroshi, you wouldn't have had any trouble. Shouldn't you be helping your brother with the shipwreck? I don't think he wants my help. He's all, he always says that I'm stupid and clumsy. I'd probably just get in the way. 
This is the worst day I've had in forever. Now let's ask him, let's do number one this time. Not if the lighthouse was lit, who was on duty. Not a clue. I'm not the one organizing things around here. It wasn't me, though, that's for sure. All right. All right, Roland. We'll leave you alone for now. Oh, we've got a fish vendor here. Old junk pile. Ooh, some full water skins. Very nice. If you look over here, there is, yes, a machete. I think that means we have two machetes now. We'll probably want to sell one of them. Uh, we could talk to Yazan. He's just staring out at the ocean in contemplation. Probably at our wrecked boat. I wish I could greet you with a smile, but, well, we both know that won't happen. A lot's breath. What a disaster. Well, how are you holding up, man? Yesterday I was leading our most ambitious expedition in a decade. Now all that's left is this wreck and a tribe in mourning. I'm not holding up much better than you are. Well, what happened? How did we sink exactly? The lighthouse wasn't lit at the time we made impact with the rocks, I'm certain. I remember thinking that we should have seen it by now, right before we hit the rock. We lost everyone below deck. Half the ship came apart before I was able to run aground. So we lost everything. All the coins, the spices, the armored weapons? Unfortunately, yes. What little we could salvage from the wreck has gone to the families of my drowned men. My finances are reeling from this loss. I have barely enough left to start over. Still, we have no right to complain. All we lost was some coin and four months of time on this failed journey. My sailors lost their lives. Well, Yazan, we have five days, or we're going to lose our home if we can't raise 150 silver. How much? Damn, that's right. You haven't been able to make payments on your blood price while we were gone. You always get the short end of the stick, don't you? The blood price on your head is disgusting. It's unfair to hold anyone responsible for the crimes of their ancestors. You weren't even born when that tragedy happened. I know, but uh, we don't have a choice. Of course you do. Your life is your own. You choose what to do and where to go. Just because a choice is hard doesn't mean you can't take it. Sorry I don't have better news. Well, I guess it's up to us to pick up the pieces. Best of luck squaring things with Rissa in the short term. Actually, I do have a small stash of goods hidden in case of disaster. I hid it near the old shipwreck to the south. When you open it, remember that the moon commands the stars. You'll know what I mean. Remember, take care of yourself and don't be a tool for others, or you'll end up missing limbs like me. Alright. By the old shipwreck, the moon commands the stars. Oh, there's a water skin right here. So I think we have... Yeah, we have a lot of water skins. We're, we're probably not going to need all of these. Usually I would carry two water skins at a time. This contraption is some kind of technology that is, is helping them purify the ocean salt water into drinking water, it looks like. A little bit of background on the world of Ori is, from what I understand, this is a post-apocalyptic world. There was some big apocalypse that happened, maybe even thousands of years ago. And I guess the civilization never quite resurged uh, very much at all, as far as the actual number of people in the population or the technology that they had once achieved. It, all, it never came back. But we'll see traces of technology and hints of those of that old civilization as we travel around Ori. And this water filtration system seems like that's kind of one of those remnants that they still have and still know how to use and take advantage of, but that they probably couldn't build on their own today. I don't think we can go up these ladders, no.
All right, let's check out the vendor here, the Sor Sorobian Caravaner. Uh, let's ask him some questions. What's it like working for Sorbor Academy? Ah, yes, I could see why you'd be curious. Sorbor Academy is a storied institution going back to even before the Scourge. It's more than just a place of learning. It's where the greatest minds in Ori congregate to shape the future. As long as you put in the work, you'll get quite a bit out of it. Connections, wealth, it asks a lot of hard work out of you. Years of effort before you see payoff, but I can't imagine living any other way. Uh, so we can join the Academy if we, if we want to. That was part of the first expansion that came out for the game. I've never done that. Uh, and I don't know how to do it. Our first playthrough, we chose the Blue Chamber Collective as our faction, which is the starting faction. Hmm, I'd recommend you concentrate on not losing your lighthouse first. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. Uh, let's, let's buy and sell. Alright, we... We don't need two of these. I think for now I'm just going to sell as much as I can. Sell one of the jerky. As far as stuff he has, he has some stuff we might want, but we're not going to buy anything right now. We're going to focus on saving up some cash. And the secondary focus is going to be purchasing a bigger bag so that when we set out into the world, we'll be able to be out there for a while. Uh, without having to constantly run back and sell or store things. Uh, what do we need to learn to survive in the wild? Oh, this is all tutorial stuff, so he'll, he'll tell us about eating and drinking and sleeping, so we will have to eat and drink. We'll see little indicators in the bottom left that'll tell us when we are hungry or when we are thirsty, or if we are tired. We'll get notifications for temperatures too, so if it's too hot or too cold, you'll notice that some gear will have cold weather defense or it will have hot weather defense. Uh, on our current inventory, we have cold weather defense on our main armor and we have some hot weather defense on our, on our helmet. We're going outside. Well, you've got the essentials at least. Here, I'll teach you a skill. Mastering these is the key to survival out in the wild. Want me to teach you one for the weapon you're currently holding? Uh, no, not for this weapon. I don't know what weapon we're going to primary yet, um, but we'll wait a little bit before we... He, it also... Yeah, we want to wait a little bit before we let him teach us a skill. So the way that skills work in Outward is our character doesn't have an innate talent tree or skill tree of any kind. We actually have to find the trainers throughout the world, they're in all the main cities. And those trainers are going to be the ones that teach us our abilities and have our ability trees for us to progress down. And the way we progress is not with experience points or ability points, it actually just takes silver. We need a lot of money to purchase the skills that we might need. We do have a couple of trainers here in Sierzo. I believe this one is the Kazite Spellblade. Yeah, this is the Kazite Spellblade. So, you can see over here we have three of these little breakpoints. You can essentially master three of the nine classes that are in the game. You have to spend one of these to get past the midway point of the spell tree. So, down here we could pay to learn anything, but if we want to learn these higher level Spellblade spells, we have to spend our breakpoint here first. And we can never get more of these that I'm aware of, and we can't respec. Uh, so you very much are locked in once you start spending these uh, to three different classes that you can max out. I think we're eventually going to grab fitness, which increases our maximum health by 25, and the amount of health we restore while sleeping. That's just a flat increase to our health, which is pretty amazing. Uh, it costs 50. We're not going to get it right this second, I don't think. Um, you know what? We might as well. Let's grab it now. And that's probably the only skill that we're going to learn from him right now. I, I don't think that we're going to go Kazite Spellblade. We might. We might. I actually haven't decided what I want to do yet with this playthrough, except that it's going to be melee focused. 
just because our full playthrough originally was so spell casting heavy, I want to try something different. Alright, we don't have a lot of space. Um, I think for now I, I do want to just sell some of this stuff. The beetles, some of the beetles might be useful in crafting, but we're going to get so much loot early on that I think we can afford to just clear out our inventory right now. Let's sell one of the waters. Uh, not the full one. Let's sell the one that isn't quite full. Uh, we could sell one of these. Alright. Alright, this is good. We've got basically empty pockets, basically empty satchel. And we've learned uh, to ba make a bunch of makeshift gear. There's this back way out of Sierzo through the Sierzo storage area. I think this is going to be the first place that we investigate. Right now what I'd really like to do is complete a tribal favor uh, so that we don't have to pay the money. Because the money is going to be valuable to us, especially early on, saving all the money that we can. Oh, do we have a lantern? We have a torch. We, have a, we do have a lantern, okay. I think for now we're going to have to bind this. Can we equip this and our one-hand weapon? Yeah, we can. Okay, that works for now. We'll carry everything we can, but there might come a point where we have to make some decisions about what to drop. We learned the Gabri Jam recipe, that's good, and we can't go that way. Let's investigate the scary hole over here. Alright, a pickaxe. We, we needed a pickaxe. It's a good thing we came in here first. All right, we have action up ahead. Let's make sure we're clear on either side here. Ooh, that goes somewhere else. I see two enemies up there. Don't really know that we want to take on two at a time. Uh, but we might not be getting much of a choice here. Let's drop our bag. We need some stamina. We're going to have to back off this guy for a minute. And at least get to a quarter stamina. Okay, no stamina. Can't attack. Oh, we got him. Oh, we need to pick up our bag. That'd be a good idea. All right, let's drink up. Perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and use a bandage. That'll start healing us a little bit over time. And we can loot these guys. We could probably carry one of these tridents. 
No, we're overweight. Uh, let's see. How much does it weigh? Six pounds. Jeez. Let's drop that. We don't need two bedrolls, but the bedrolls don't weigh a lot. The spikes we probably don't need. They don't sell for much. He has some linen cloth on him. If we can carry one of these, we can always grab it later or on the way out. But I think for now we need to keep our bag space open in case we find anything more valuable in here. Ooh, like this iron vein. Iron scrap. And the game is incredibly dark. It's, it's meant to be dark, so the darkness is a mechanic of the game. What we can probably do... Uh, is we could turn the brightness up maybe a little bit. It's already up quite a bit. I don't want to make it too bright, but I know that YouTube has a tendency to darken things. Alright, that's back out where we came. Green mushrooms. Don't mind if I do. And this just circles back around. Okay. Danger going forward will strand you in the wilderness until you make your way back to the village. That's perfectly alright. This is the rear entrance. Well, it's really just an exit. You can't get back into Sierra this way. Uh, but you can get out. I think this drops us along the coast. Let's see. Yeah, okay, perfect. Go take a look up here. Every, anytime you see a structure like this, there's usually a, a storage crate somewhere nearby. Uh, not so in this case. Hmm. Maybe we look a little bit farther over here. Okay, I see a pearl bird. These things can attack pretty hard. They also like to run away when they are when they're low on health. Let's see if we can take him. And now he's running. Now we gotta see if we can catch him. Which, at low levels, is not always easy because we have limited stamina. Sometimes these things can climb up mountainsides, so luckily here he got kind of cornered in. I've heard these have a chance to drop a mask or a helmet that increases r movement speed by quite a bit. Never got the item myself. Okay, that thing down there, though, we don't want to mess with that. That thing can hurl balls of uh, lightning magic at us. So we will avoid him for now, and let's investigate this tree stump instead. Antidote. And we get some soothing tea. This can cure the common cold and restores burnt mana. Uh, you'll see our, our stamina bar down there has a little bit of grayed out brown to the yellow. That part of our stamina bar is what is called burned. So that you'll see it's not refilling. We would have to drink a certain tea or sleep to get that unburned. Health can be burned as well. When we take damage, we can get burned health, which we'll have to sleep or drink a different tea to remove the burned health and be able to heal up to our full health bar. 
Right now we don't have any burned health. I'm going to hang on to our bandage though. Uh, because right over here we have a dude who might need our help. Hey dude. I can't, I can't move. A pistol shrimp got me. I think it tore a hole in my gut. Help, please, before it comes back. Uh, hold still, we have a bandage. I can feel it working. I think a lot. I'm not going to die out here. Writ of a tribal favor added. Oh, it's you. Thank you. A million times thank you. I seriously owe you one. I'll talk to Aunt Rissa and make sure you get a full tribal favor for this. I don't think I'm fit to run back home just yet. I'll go find a safe place to let that medicine do its thing. And then go home the second I'm able. Alright, sure. So that was our tribal favor. If you go out the storage exit of Sierzo, you can find this guy on the beach. And if you get lucky, the rock mantises won't be around. And you can get some blue sand, which you can sell for quite a bit. Or you can get some gear crafted out of it. Once you have enough. I'm not going to go mess with that guy. It looks like the sun is setting on our first day back in Ori. This cave we can investigate. But I think it's a tidal cave, which means it's full of water during the day, and then at night, the water recedes. So we might be waiting till darkness to go back in here. Let's see. Oh no, the water's gone right now. Maybe it just has to be like in the late afternoon or near dusk. Uh, I see a rock man mantis way back there. But we should be able to drop down and quietly collect some of this blue sand. Turn our lantern off. I don't know if that's going to help us hide out. Or not. This blue sand can be hard to spot, but you can see it's little blue dots on the ground. Okay. Yeah, we don't want to mess with him, I don't think. We got lucky. Oh, we were lucky for a minute. Let's go, let's go. Roll, roll. Oh, no. We gotta go. We gotta swerve. Do the swerving maneuver. <laughs> okay. I think we've got it. Wow, he hit hard. Let's get out of there. Eventually, we'll be able to take those things on, but that's not something we can handle right now. That is a beautiful sunset. Uh, let's see how we want to work our way back around to get back to town here. Probably just... So if we look, if we're looking at the lighthouse, we're looking directly north. We're over here somewhere, so this is the area map. And we have all these places of interest already marked. But we don't know where we're at. We have to kind of surmise where we're at uh, by using the map and using landmarks. So we are somewhere right around here. I think we can just... Uh, we should be able to come out and just cut across and come back up to the city. Let's see if that works out. We also have to be wary uh, about bandits, however. Maybe we can go right up some of these hills we can actually climb. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Oh, a little nest we can loot. No doubt a pearl bird nest. Don't mind if we do. Ah, oh, we're not going that way. Oh. There is fall damage, so we don't we don't want to fall from too high. We want to be careful about that. Uh, nice. We're going to be way overweight, I think. 
Uh, we could put some stuff into our bag. Or into our pocket, rather. That gets us close. Let's drop the rusted dagger. We're still a little overweight, but I think it's manageable. Um, hmm. I don't know if we need any of this right now. I don't want to become too overburdened on our way back, especially... Well, we're really low on health. What we want to do is avoid combat. We'll turn our lamp on since it's getting darker. Oh, maybe not with these bandits. So let's turn the lamp off. And let's see if we can just get around these guys. We don't have a great weapon. And we are... We are out of healing items. Let's see if we can make any more. Yeah, we can. One more, but at least it's something. We'll try to hang on to it. I'm pretty sure the town has to be right around here somewhere. Maybe not. If we're looking directly east at the mountain, that means we're somewhere over here. So we actually came out and we must have went pretty far around. Let's drink some water to get our stamina regen buff going. And we'll sprint back. I really don't know all that's changed in Outward with the two new expansions that have come out. I know they added a couple of classes. And of course they added the Sorobians faction. I think the Three Brothers DLC is an endgame DLC. Whereas the Sorobians expansion was, I think it just introduced their faction as a faction choice. And added the new trainers and new quest content. It was a, just a new part of the leveling experience. But I think the Three Brothers is exclusively uh, endgame stuff after you beat the first main story quest line. But if you've never played Outward before, there's a whole lot to do in the world besides that main story quest. Uh, we're going to get into a lot of trouble, and it's, from what I remember, going to be really fun uh, along the way. Uh, let's check out what's going on over here. Failed adventurer. Uh, we'll take that. That's going to put us overweight, but we can sell it. We want these greasy ferns. I don't remember exactly what potion we use these in, but they're used in alchemy. Alright, we are a little overweight, but that's okay, because I think we're getting close to home. Should be salt. Yeah, that's the entrance right up there, so we could loot some of this and probably end up just storing it in our storage for now. Let me know what you guys think about uh, what faction we should go. I think for our build, maybe we will do some kind of uh, two-handed weapon, Kazite Spellblade. And we'll have to figure out what other, what two other trees do we want to go in. Maybe a Kazite Spellblade Shaman Warrior Monk? Oh wait, what is this? Are we, are we off track here? Are we up here? I have a feeling that, yeah, I think we, I think we came a little bit too far north. Maybe we need to go out and go west.
if we want, we can get up high, and then we should be able to see the lighthouse. I'm not seeing it down here. What is this that we're looking at? Okay, directly south. We, we have to be somewhere here, right? If we're looking directly south and we're seeing the mountain, which means we should just be able to head due west. Uh, we could rest here. When you see butterflies, you can rest without a chance of being interrupted, uh, attacked in the middle of the night, basically. Oops, I don't know why he's not placing it. Let's try that again. That's weird. Uh, he's not deploying it. I don't know what's going on with that. Maybe we don't need to rest. Yeah, we need to be heading west. I see bandits down there that are about to get jumped by hyenas. <laughs> I don't know if we want any part in that. But that's also the cool thing about NPCs is they will literally attack each other. Sometimes you can kind of goad them into doing so. You can get an enemy to attack you and lead it towards others and then sometimes they'll fight and it's usually good when that happens. Oh man, I'm just getting completely lost. I, I feel, I definitely feel it. I felt kind of familiar with it, but I think that my familiarness just kind of led me astray. Uh, we should have kept some more landmarks in mind. I'd love to get up somewhere where we could just see the lighthouse. Ugh. Come on. There it is. It's way over there. We did need to just basically head west. Uh, we'll probably be okay if we slide down this. Let me know about the volume settings also, guys. If the music needs to be turned up more, just let me know. Our guy is not doing very good, are we? You can see how much of our stamina that we've burnt now? We are hungry. We can fix that, at least. We can definitely do something about our hunger. Uh, we're being attacked by a pearl bird? I don't know if I dare to look around. No, it's a, a hyena. We, we definitely don't want to stop. We really don't want to fight this hyena right now. That has something to do with being uh, terribly low on health. Basically, if he hits us once, we're probably going to die. And we're really close to the walls, so I'd like to just make it home. Apparently he's, thankfully he's the slowest hyena in the entire Shershanese zone. So that worked out for us. Alright, uh, first things first, let's sell everything we don't plan to use or need. Ooh, 
We definitely don't need all of these. I don't know if we need... I'd like to grab a two-handed weapon, so I don't think we need any of those. Let's swap our mining picks. Let's let's sell the, the one that's broken or the durability is diminished on it. We probably want to equip that hat. The blue sand. I think we should save this. I, I think that we can use this to create a, a set of armor here that might benefit us if we want to wear a heavier armor type. And basically what I plan to do with this playthrough is we're going to have a, an armor set that we are going to use in dungeons when we know we're going to be fighting. And then we're going to have an armor set that we're going to run in that we are going to wear when we're traveling long distances. Azure shrimp we could use to make mana restoring food. Let's, let's sell it for now. I don't know how much mana we're going to be using. All right. Uh, that being done, I, I think now we can just go to Rissa and we can show her the tribal favor and we can get the deed to our house. And at least then we don't have to worry. Uh, what can happen is since you only have the five days, if you go out into the world and you, maybe you sleep for a night, you adventure for a day, and then if you get killed by bandits, there's a chance that they could lock you up. And during that event, when you die and then respawn where they've locked you up, essentially like any amount of time could pass. And you could fail quest by being captured in an untimely moment. And we, we don't want to do that. What are you? Oh, you're a great felling axe. You're at least a two-handed weapon. The only problem with that is that we right now we don't have a backpack that we can attach our lantern to, so we're going to want to fix that uh, basically immediately. But first things first. Uh, let's talk about our blood price. You have a way to make the payment? No, we earned a tribal favor. And on time, too, I'm impressed. You've proven you could be an excellent asset to the tribe when you put your mind to it. Well done. Consider this payment dealt with. Sierzo thanks you for your great deed. I should also let you know, Olie and Yazan are leaving Sierzo. You should speak with them before they go. Uh, what do you mean they're leaving? Olie is leaving Sierzo permanently to go join the holy mission of a lot. Nothing I could say would convince her to stay. Uh, well, I mean, we're gonna miss her. As will we all. I don't suppose you could convince her to stay. She is my only daughter, set to inherit the clan when I join the ancestors. No, I don't suppose you'd be able to convince her. Her mind is made up. And why is Jazan leaving? Listen, the shipwreck that killed so many of our people and nearly took your life was the fault of Yazan's brother, Roland. A blood price has been declared upon his bloodline. Oh, Roland. Roland always did have his head in the clouds, but to show such ne negligence, he must be held accountable. Twelve people are dead because of his actions. Yazan bears responsibility as well. As captain, he should have known better than to approach the bay when the lighthouse was not lit. This tragedy could have been avoided if either of them had used their heads. It's a little harsh. Roland accepts the consequences of his actions. Yazan refuses. He has chosen to exile himself from Sierzo forever rather than do his duty to the tribe and bear the blood price. Oh, well, it looks like we're losing two friends in one day. I know this can't be easy for you, but it's, this is the way things have to be. Come back once you've said your goodbyes to them. Once you're done, we should discuss your future here in Sierzo, now that you can handle the world outside. Alright, so Olie is going to join the Holy Mission. That's one of the factions. Yazan is going to the Abrasar Desert to Levant. That is another one of the factions. The third faction is the Blue Chamber Collective, which is uh, here in Sierzo and also in the city of Berg in Enmikar Forest. And then there's the Sorobians faction as well. So the only one that's off the table for me is uh, we've done the Blue Chamber Collective Line. So I'm going to pick one of the other of the remaining three factions. 
Uh, but for now, uh, this is great. We have our house. We're going to rest overnight. And then we'll go talk to our friends and see what else Rissa has in store for us. I think this is going to be a good place for us to take a break. Thank you guys for joining me here in the world of Ori. Let me know what you think. And as always, I really appreciate the support. It means a ton to me. So take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. And we will see you back in Ori really soon. Bye now.